So before we start this episode, I wanted to tell you that I am still a little bit sick. I'm just getting back from Comic-Con, and so I haven't been able to record any new videos at all because of, the, of what's called the Comic-Con crud. Basically, when you get sick after going to Comic-Con, it happens, so hence why I've been unable to make videos. But as soon as I get better, I will make videos, so enjoy this episode. What is going on everyone? It's Ultimate Spy 53 here, and welcome to another episode of Reviewed. Reviewed number 160. And today, I'm going to be reviewing the movie Mr. Holmes. So what did you think of Mr. Holmes? I liked it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. It was, it was, um... It's fun to see Ian McKellen in a different role. Yeah, you know, I'm so used to seeing him as Gandalf. And yeah, I know. I felt it was a bit slow-paced. It, it, it took a while to get to the point. I, I didn't hate it. I just felt like it, it, I don't know, could have been done better in terms of the pacing. It just felt like it was a bit off. It was a bit slow, you know? I think first we should, like, maybe give a, an idea of what this movie is about. Mr. Yes. Holmes is an aging Sherlock Holmes, a 93-year-old Sherlock Holmes who has, in this story, been retired mm -hmm. for 35 years. Yeah. Uh, he's been living in the country, tending to his bees, yeah. with, with his housekeeper. The housekeeper, he's got like a, a housekeeper that's only been there for three years, but with her young son. Which is weird because when I looked it up, apparently it's set in like South England, but I'm pretty sure those two people are Irish, obviously. I, I, I think the tell. Irish housekeeper is kind of a tradition. I don't know, like, like, yeah. I kind of felt like, so there's a, there's a kid in the movie named Roger, yeah. very sweet kid. Yeah. I, I kind of felt like, and this is kind of the way the, the, the film was portraying these characters, is the fact that Roger didn't really get along with his mother very well. Maybe at first. I think they didn't understand each other. They had a hard time. I think time that was a lot her. of, you know, the things that he was interested in worried her. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you'd see her getting angry because he was uh, he was interested in, in uh, intellectual things. Yeah. He was interested in reading and solving mysteries and he's fascinated that Mr. Holmes you know, that he's now living in the same house as, as, as the great Sherlock Holmes yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and he has all these questions for him and he's completely taken away by that but uh mm -hmm. his mother is very very troubled and you you kind of mm -hmm. don't know why for a really long time why would she be so angry that her son is interested in solving mysteries or in science or in you yeah. know these kinds of things very much so um, and it kind of there's a there's a poignant moment near the end where there's a little bit more light that's shed on that uh so um yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't find it slow-paced. I just kind of felt like, because a lot of the movies that I watch, they get to the point because they're super fast-paced and they're action-based. I mean, I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes myself, but uh, I mean, those movies, they're, or series or whatever, they, they're interesting in their own way. They, 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 are, they, they, do, they do get to the point, but this one kind of felt like it dragged on and on. and It just took forever to get to the point, to, like, the plot took a while to keep going. It just kind of, some movies, I see that, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of, it's boring, not in the story sense, but it's just boring in the, in the pacing. I just felt like it was a bit off, but as for the story itself, it's very interesting, kind of shows you, like, a a version of Sherlock Holmes that has, like, been fictionalized by, by Watson, and he has retired to the countryside, and... He is writing the story of his last case about this man who has a wife who... He's just a very shoots. controlling man, this man. Yeah. He wanted to follow his wife around and he didn't like it that she was taking... Exactly. Getting obsessed with her music lessons and he wanted to forbid her to get into the bank account. Exactly, yeah. She's very unhappy. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think um, the, the poignant thing and in the, in the, in the main, you know, kind of focus of this film is that... Sherlock Holmes is 93, but that he's, he's losing his memory. Yeah. And the reason that he's writing down this story is because he can't remember how it ended. And um, Watson had written all the Sherlock Holmes stories. Oh, yeah. 
and he had given this story a different ending than it actually had. And Holmes knew that much. He was like, this is not the way it really ended. It kind of... He doesn't know how it ended. And he knows yeah. it's the thing that sent him into retirement. So he's trying and trying and trying to remember. It kind of... An example of what we're talking about is how Bilbo wrote the stories of his adventures. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing where Sherlock is writing... writing Watson was writing the stories of... Sherlock's adventures as, as a detective, and right. in this movie, yeah. it's not your traditional Sherlock Holmes movie or whatever. No, you know, not at all. The ones I see are, are the BBC show with Benedict Cumberbatch, and, and as far as I know, the third one is being put on hold. Well, but Benedict Cumberbatch is not traditional Sherlock Holmes. No, no, no. no. Yeah, well, our I mean, modern day twit turn on. Yeah, I, but have you seen the more traditional Sherlock Holmes yeah, very movies like, or read any of the books? I have seen... The two that they made with Robert Downey Jr. That's not my favorite, but I do think that he's a good actor. And with this one, it's just a very different kind of Sherlock Holmes movie that I'm used to seeing because it's just so different. It's so well, I think that's what I loved about. It. I mean, you know, Sherlock Holmes has really kind of been done to death. Yeah, and there's, right. you know, so to to see, well, I I kind of love a movie with um an an older, you know, an elder as the protagonist exactly. to, to have someone who's 93 and of course you know played by the the, the great Ian McKellen uh, is I, I think it makes for a really fascinating film and mm -hmm. I loved in this film that the, the aging Sherlock Holmes has developed you know a, a kind of a friendship with this boy who's very really isolated very um, they're tending bees together the whole thing with the bees was very fascinating Speaking um, of the bees, yeah. when I first saw this movie, and this is the second time I've, I've seen it with, with my mom here, it kind of surprised me when I first saw it. it was actually, I mean, I don't usually cry at movies. It's, it's pretty rare. It, it takes a really emotional scene to make me tear mm -hmm. up. Harry Potter, for example. Mm -hmm. But this one, uh, I didn't cry, but I did feel sad. I feel like, oh, it's so emotional. When Roger comes in contact with the wasps, because... They're very different from bees. Right. Wasps are the ones that don't believe yeah. they're seeing, and bees are the ones that are, need to be protected. I personally hate bees just because they're bees. That was a very poignant scene. Very poignant scene. And it just it shows how much beautiful work with the at that, at that the scene that I'm talking about where Roger comes in contact with the wasp. So at Holmes, you, you kind of see that he really does care for him. Well, this is a story about so. Sherlock Holmes having lived a, the, the life of of the mind, the life of the intellect, and he states at the beginning of the movie that he's, uh, he doesn't need emotions. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that he, he prefers intellectual, I can't remember how he put it, but, but there's a, you know, the, the life of the intellect or something, something mm -hmm. along those lines. So he talks about, oh, well, grief and mourning, I, I prefer the intellect. These are yeah. common, common things. So that if he were to grieve, if he were to basically feel his emotions, that uh, that would be just very common and he's above that. And you see that, you know, as the movie unfolds, of course, he's 93 years old, so many people in his life are now gone. Exactly, um, yeah. And he has never mourned them. Yeah. And uh, there's... So the... the the events that unfold, and then I think maybe the, the slow pacing for you, it might have been because there were flashbacks to, because and I think I there, there are these it, mysteries, yeah. and you, you know, you get a little hint, and then you get another little hint the next time you go back to, to a period of time, and then you get another little hint, and it doesn't really all come together until the end, what happened. Yeah. Um, he's trying to solve the mystery of what happened in that final case, and you only get it a little piece at a time. Yeah, I did like I did like that part of the film. I found this delightful. He's able to do all these things like there's a scene where he goes swimming. Like that's the last thing you'd see him do as a ninety three year old version of himself. I love that. It's just, I love it's that. just unusual, but it's also or, like or Sherlock Holmes swimming in the sea. That, that was great. like wow. <laughs> who knew he could do that still? Like, you know, well, who knew the character not, not the actor, but the character at ninety three years old doing in the sea. Yeah. Anything like like swimming, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I, I definitely felt like my favorite relationship was definitely Roger and Sherlock because it was just yeah. so 
strong and you got some amazing actors, you know, Ian McKellen. Do you know who played the boy? I don't, I, I, I saw that it was on, on the cast that I looked kind of familiar and I, I thought perhaps I'd seen him in something else. Well, but. before I found out what his name was, I originally thought he was Thomas, whatever his last name is. He, he was in Doctor Who at one point. His first name is Thomas, but I can't remember his Oh, lasting. are you he, thinking of the, in the Tenet years? The yeah, kid, there was, there was the this kid, kid that was in um, Human Nature, Family Blood. Tom, Tom, yeah, Thomas that's someone. why he looked familiar, but he, he but he was a different actor. He just looks. Well, he has the same kind of face. He he, he does. He's, He's way too young. Different actor. He's way too young. But this is Milo Parker. That he plays looks. If you if you were to look, if you were to t- take uh, Thomas Burton, whatever his last name is, I have to be correct or not. Kind of. I'll add in his name right here, but you put that. To you know, Subzai with, with Miles Parker, very similar, different but very similar. He does have kind of the same look. And it almost makes one or other related or something. He's so sweet. Yeah, Favorite yeah. Miles Parker, definitely. born in two thousand two, so that means when the film was made, he would have been thirteen. Yeah, twelve or thirteen. Such a cute um, kid. He's yeah, yeah. yeah. I like him a lot. Great little actor. That was yeah. And he was also in Miss Peregrine's Home for yeah. Peculiar Children. I've only seen that one. Which once. I have not seen. I'd like um, to see that. But I wanted to read the book first. That movie was a crazy movie. But one thing about this movie that was kind of a shocker to me, I mean it's not really that big a deal, but like I was just confused because I saw the cast it's like, Oh, they're they're gonna be in the movie and it's like, Oh they're not really though. It's because of the camera lens. You got, it got the you it kinda of blurred them out. Miss Hudson and Watson they were in the movie, but not really. They were kind of like the background, but you couldn't really see them. Is that was that even that was on purpose? It was meant to be a Sherlock Holmes well, movie. Well, it's not really a movie that's focused on Mrs. Hudson and Watson, but Mrs. Hudson was in the scene. It was just blurry. No, no, she's serving the when he when he ha- takes the case when he's the, the case that he's trying to remember when it goes back into flashback on this on that case, and and the man is saying, "Oh yes, I'm here about my wife. How did you know?" And the, 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 Mrs. The, the, Hudson is serving tea. Oh, I, th- I thought it was right? no. Okay. That's Mrs. Hudson serving tea. I was confused. And what and the man what the man says about his wife is oh well she had two miscarriages and she's treating them as if they're real children. Right. And Mrs. Hudson just stopped and gave him this like if looks could kill. I kind of feel like he was this grumpy version of Sherlock Holmes. Oh well, yeah, he was definitely. Definitely, kind of felt like he he was just like sad. He's forgetting yeah. things. I mean, if you can imagine a Sherlock Holmes who is losing his memory. That was you know, the part that's of the, about the tra- most tragic, part. you know, and he's trying all these different things. He's trying this strange herb from Japan, to, yeah, you know, to, to it, sharpen it a, his memory. It was, trying, what was it called? Uh, it was trying, prickly Ash. Prickly Ash. <laughs> yeah, so he's gone to Japan remember, to get this special I remember when uh, Roger put it in his, his food, it's like, oh, and it was gross. What's the point in trying it if you're gonna you're not gonna well, like because, it because and then he eats like think, <laughs> don't you think it's because he's trying to do what mr holmes does trying to because he idolizes him that's that's yeah. his that's his hero but i i definitely felt like this was a very powerful movie very mm-hmm. emotional very uh it was wonderful to to see just a different side to sherlock character because yeah he's you know you always see him as this energetic detective who's always Really good at you know deduction, which is my favorite aspect of that character. It's deduction, able to find you know find details mm-hmm. of, from someone. Like there was a scene where you know, it was just the weirdest thing ever, where Roger was trying to, to figure out where he where he'd been. That was that was kind of cute. It's like I'm trying to look in the mirror and see if I can figure out where I've been, and I'm like, don't okay. you know where you've been? And then, and then the the really interesting thing about Roger was that. As I was watching the actor's performance, I kind of felt like he may have autism just because of the way he kind of out out speaks. Because he there's a scene where um where he just kind of tells t- tells his mom about what he's feeling and everything like that and her feelings, and then that he's harsh. Yeah, he's harsh. Yeah, and then it's like, does he have autism? Or is he just saying it what he thinks is even though it's not. And exactly I don't know if that was supposed say. to be part of his character or not, but I think that you might have picked up on something. He yeah. was angry, and so he said something to her in anger that was very unkind. Definitely. Um, yeah. He said something without, you know, stopping to think about the impact it would have on her. But I think that's, I think that's something that lots of people do, not just autistic people. Yeah. I don't know. Sherlock Holmes is a character that I've always been very fond of. 
I'm a big fan of the character. I wanted to see more Watson. Like, more of that Aww. stuff. I wanted to see a lot more of well, the classic adventures of Sherlock Holmes, and it wasn't really right. what I was expecting. But, I mean, it's, yeah, it's about after those adventures are over, so... Yeah. The case is something that he... And I, I totally get that, what was the plot of the movie, but it was just, like, it was surprising. But, yeah. Overall, what did you think of the movie and, um, the third part? And anything else you'd like to say about it? Overall, I just thought, uh, very well done and wonderful to see Ian McKellen in this role. Definitely. Uh, and also, I really enjoyed seeing a new take on Sherlock Holmes, and I love so. seeing it with an older actor, so my, I would say thumbs up. And for me, I just, I thought it was enjoyable, I thought it was interesting, but it is not my favorite Sherlock Holmes movie, definitely. I did think the acting was superb, it was fantastic, I had no issues with it. I thought that, that was a very interesting story, and I, I liked it a lot. So, I am going to leave this with a, well for me, I would give it a... 8 out of 10. I'd say 8 out of 10 is pretty good. Oh, you give it an 8? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's even It wasn't high. perfect, but it wasn't like... See, because I was going to give it an 8, but for me, an 8 is a really high score. Yeah. Right? I mean, when I give something 8 out of 10, that's like... Well, I, I usually yeah. rate things pretty high, but I think that's like... I'm not going to go to full 10 out of 10, because that's... Okay, okay. Lot, but. Okay, so there's, for, for you, there was the boring factor. It was just... Again, pacing was the biggest issue for me. I, for me, an 8 is a really high score. Yeah. So I wouldn't give it a 10... I mean, I wouldn't give a movie a 10 out of 10 unless it was just a masterpiece. It would have to be just, like, fantastic, you know, like, yeah. my, the most memorable movie of my life or something to <laughs> get a 10. So so an 8 is a pretty high score for me. So, yeah. For, so for you, an 8 means there's a boring factor. <laughs> so this movie, it wasn't perfect. But I did like the acting. It was, it was, the acting was just amazing. So that's okay. really all I'm going to say for Mr. Holmes' very excellent movie. I would recommend checking it out. It's... Well, I found it on Hoopla, so you can go check it out there. And uh, overall, nice. it's very wonderful to watch. Just seeing a, you know, seeing a role that I've never seen Ian McCollum do is just very, it's just a joy to see. All right. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Reviewed. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe for more episodes of this series and of the series that I do as well as your content. Also, make sure you click that bell to enable alerts to know some of the And I'll be back next week with another episode.